This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. So today we're back here in San Francisco and I'm going to be doing some street photography today with my Fujifilm X-Pro2. Now the X-Pro2 is a camera that I've owned for a while now. It's not the newest X-Pro model, um, but it's a camera that has a very, very large cult following. Um, but I want to make a quick little video to talk about the settings and how I personally set up my Fujifilm X-Pro2. I also want to do a quick little tour of this setup, show you guys the lens that I'm using and some of the accessories that I have on it, uh, just so you guys know how I set my camera up um, and optimize it pretty much just for street photography. And to top it all off, you guys, I am going to be showing you guys my film simulations as well as how I set those up. I have three different kinds, two color profiles and one black and white to mimic HP5. So without further ado, you guys, let's go ahead and jump in to how I set up my Fujifilm X-Pro. Now for starters, let's take you guys on a little tour of my camera, starting with the lens. Now the lens that I am using is the Fuji XF 23mm f2. Now the 23mm f2 lens is a 35mm equivalent. This is just the only lens that I own for the X-Pro lineup, but it's also my favorite. And one thing that I do love about Fuji lenses is that they have your aperture ring built into the lens, so no more going through your menus, you can actually set your aperture right here on the physical lens itself. Other than that, the X-Pro2 is pretty much bare bones. I did add a little kind of thumb grip right here to imitate and almost replicate the feeling of what it's like to shoot with my Leica M2 as well as a black kind of rope strap, uh, pretty much standard across all of my cameras. All right, so the way I like to set up the X-Pro2 is to pretty much replicate what it's like shooting on my Leica system. And I shoot with the Leica M2 and a 35 millimeter lens. And so in a way, in a sense, the X-Pro2 for me is kind of like a digital version of that. Uh, and one of the first things that I always make sure to do when setting up my camera for street photography is to shoot in the optical viewfinder. Now the X-Pro2 does have an EVF, which is an electric viewfinder. What's up with this car? <laughs> Let's go, right? <laughs> you trying to get in the video? <laughs> the X-Pro2 does have an electric viewfinder, which is great, but personally for me, I do like shooting optically when it's available. And so since the X-Pro2 X -Pro2 has it, excuse me, uh, that's pretty much the only option I go for. So I shoot in the optical viewfinder mode, and I do that by heading over to the switch, and through here you can select between your different viewfinder modes and it goes straight into the optical for me so what's great too is depending on the lenses that you use the viewfinder will actually adjust the frame lines for you automatically so there's no real restriction to you know shooting with different lenses with your frame lines like you would on a manual film rangefinder camera now the second thing that I do is I always always shoot the X-Pro2 in manual focus mode now on the bottom left of the X-Pro2 here you have a selector switch that can pretty much cycle between single, continuous, and manual focus mode. Most of the time it's on manual focus, um, and I use my lens system basically kind of like shooting a film camera. So in the menu settings, if you hit menu, when you go down to your autofocus and manual focus settings, you can actually adjust right here the depth of field scale set to film format or pixel basis. Pixel basis I am not too familiar with, but usually when you go to film format basis, it's just like shooting with a rangefinder lens on a Leica. You're gonna get to see this hyperfocal scale here on the very bottom of the screen, and that pretty much allows you to zone focus. So that's pretty much all I do. You know, I, I'm usually floating between f8 and f16, um, and I'll pre-focus my lens to about one and a half to two meters, and then I have a nice range that I can use for focus uh, without really having to adjust my focus on the fly. Now, if I do end up wanting to, you know, have autofocus here and there, something that I really, really love about the Expert 2 is that you can set up this autofocus lock button right here, kind of like an instant autofocus button. So it's back button focus. So, you know, you're still in manual focus mode and you're, you know, focus between one and a half and two meters, let's say. Well, let's say something's in infinity and you don't have the time to adjust 
you can go ahead and hit that autofocus lock button and it's going to autofocus the camera for you. So you still have the option to autofocus as well as you know set up your camera for zone focusing. Now with that said, I usually stick this camera into aperture priority mode. Part of you know kind of my philosophy when it comes to shooting street photography is to minimize uh, your time looking at the camera. And so if there's ways you can automate your workflow, um, and for me that's an aperture priority, I will take full advantage of that. So I adjust my aperture and I let the um, camera decide the shutter speed. Now, in order to kind of combat the issues that come with that, you know, maybe it drops to a super low shutter speed, I always compensate by raising my ISO very high. So I'm generally shooting between 800 and 1600. So on a sunny day, it'll be like 200 to 400 ISO. And if I'm at F8 to F16, I'll be anywhere between 1 250th of a second to 1 500th of a second. That is fast enough of a shutter speed to freeze any moving subjects. On a cloudy day where the sun is still out but there are clouds in the sky, I'll be around like 400 to 800 ISO. But anytime it's overcast like this or anytime, uh, you know, I'm, in, I'm indoors, let's say, I will shoot between 1600 and 3200 ISO. And the X-Pro2 actually has pretty decent ISO range for it being a, I think, five year plus old camera. Now that is essentially how I optimize my camera for street photography. The next thing that I want to talk about now you guys is my film simulations and how I kind of set those up to give off different looks. I have the Kodachrome preset, I also have a Portra 160 VC and then my HP5 one is my go-to black and white film simulation and I'm going to pretty much give you guys all the details on that right now. But before we jump into that I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Alrighty guys, so now that we're moving into 2022, if you're a photographer you need to have your own website. Luckily Squarespace makes it super simple to get started. All you have to do is select from a template. They have a ton of award-winning templates that you can use to get started in minutes. They also have pages for your portfolio, an e-commerce shop, and one of my favorite features, the blog feature. And the best part is folks, Squarespace is hooking it up with 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Just head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout for that 10% off of your first purchase. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Let's jump back into the Fuji X-Pro2. All right, so in order to create these kind of film effects, there's always gonna be a base of a film simulation. So the first one we're gonna be talking about is the Kodachrome preset. Now this is not my own personal recipe. This is a recipe that I learned from another photographer um, and I've kind of molded into my own. Now the Kodachrome recipe is pretty much just going to replicate any slide film look. Um, now with that said, the base film simulation that I use is gonna be Classic Chrome. And Classic Chrome is a beautiful kind of you know starting point. Um, and from there on out, dynamic range is gonna be set to DR200, auto white balance, I always shoot in raw plus fine. Noise reduction now is set to minus one. Uh, part of the reason for this is because I do shoot at a high ISO sometimes. You want to kind of limit and uh, you know tone down some of that gradient. Now in terms of highlight tone, generally I have it set to plus one, but because it's overcast today, I set it to zero. Uh, and then shadow tone, I always hit plus two. Color stays at zero. Sharpness stays at plus one. So that's just the basic kind of Kodachrome film preset. Feel free to, uh, you know, tweak it in any way that you feel is gonna be best for you. With this film simulation, I generally use it for street photography. I use it for a lot of just, you know, kind of casual everyday photography. Um, and I hope that you guys see, if you ever do try it out, uh, some of these softer kind of colors that it kind of brings out. So definitely check that one out. The one thing that I don't use this preset for is for portraits. To combat that, my second preset is the Portra 160 VC. For Portra 160 VC, the base film simulation for this is Pro Neg Standard. Um, and this is just gonna you know, be ideal for like portraits and soften up that skin. Uh, from there on out, again, we're shooting in manual focus and then we have dynamic range set to 100. Auto white balance and noise reduction is gonna be set to zero. Um, all the same settings except for the highlight tone. So for the highlight tone for this, I generally have it set to plus two. Uh, this is just going to look really, really nice for portraits, especially if you wanna have that kind of overexposed kind of portrait look. Shadows I set to plus one. Um, color I kind of bring out a little bit more of, so I do a plus one on that. And the sharpness always just stays at a plus one. So that's pretty much the base for both, you know, the Kodachrome as well as the uh, Portra 160 VC. And possibly my absolute favorite film simulation is going to be the HP5 recipe. 
Now the HP 5 SP, fairly standard. You're gonna be starting out with the Acros plus yellow filter. The yellow filter is just going to enhance some of the contrast and you know darken up the skies a little bit. Very suitable for things like street photography. If you want a more punchy look though, I would say put on the red filter. Uh, definitely a different look. So kind of go in between those two. Now the only difference between this one and the other ones is gonna be noise reduction is set to minus one. Um, I sh typically shoot this between 1600 and 3200 ISO. Trying to imitate what HP5 would look like. Um, and the only other real kind of difference is the shadow tone will be plus one. Uh, fairly standard recipe that you guys can tweak and make your own. So with that said, you know, some of the settings that we talked about in this episode were just to really mimic what the experience would be like on shooting with a Leica film camera. Um, and that's pretty much all it is. Again, between F8, F16, I'm zone focused to about one and a half to two meters. Then I will use one of those three presets depending on, you know, what I'm feeling for that day or just the weather as well. So that is pretty much going to wrap up this episode. I hope you enjoyed, you know, how I set up the X-Pro2 for street photography. Definitely let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, or maybe if you guys have, you know, anything else you want to add on to, uh, you know, setting up your Fuji camera. But that's gonna wrap it up. I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, this has been King James. Until next time.